Welcome. You're tuned to the Urban Affairs Program. It's time to get up for Urban Perspectives with your host, Pete Rhodes. Welcome. You are watching Urban Perspectives. This edition is sponsored in part by the Council on Black Minnesotan Stair Step Foundation, the Metropolitan Economic Development Association, and Comcast. I'm your host, Pete Rhodes. On this edition of Urban Perspectives, we continue our series recognizing outstanding contributions by women in education, business, government, and arts. Join us as we salute women in our community here on Urban Perspectives. My first guest was born into the legendary Peterson music family. She is an award-winning vocalist both live and in the studio for national recording artists and commercials. She hosts a weekly jazz show on KBM Jazz Radio, and you can see her performing locally in the Twin Cities all over town. She's also a nationally renowned motivational speaker. Please welcome to Urban Perspectives, Patty Peterson. Thank you very much. Patty, thank you so Great much to be for here. being here. Thank I, you. I am so happy. I told you I had uh, Paul here. Yes. And uh, he helped us kick off the uh, shows back uh, uh, a while back in one of our top rated shows, I will say. Good. Yeah, so I'm glad. So He's so good with words. Yeah. He's really a great guy to help you kick off something like that. Well, he was constantly promoting his sister to get on here, so <laughs> now we have her. Well, I'm, here we I'm, are. I'm happy. Good. As a member of that legendary uh, family, though, Patty, um, how were you influenced by your mother, Jean Peterson, in developing your jazz style? Well, you know, I was influenced by my mother in so many ways. Not only her music, but her jazz style. Uh, uh, first of all, she was a widow at 47, yeah. lost a child prior to that. She continued to persevere and do her art. Yeah. And so, for many reasons, she taught me that um, you can do that balance of motherhood and artistic um, nature, and she earned her living mm. to, uh, by that. So teaching me the balance of being able to have family, okay. have God, mm -hmm. and have music was really something that is at my core. Um, technically, what she taught me was, you know, do what the people want to hear, mm -hmm. play the music they want to hear, and you'll always be working. Yeah. So there yeah. are a couple of really, really great tips for those who are out in the music industry. When you play what people want to hear, and sometimes it's your own original music, mm -hmm. you'll always be working. But you know what? She always told me to put heart in it, too. Yeah, and yeah. Well, she, uh, she was, was a great amazing. teacher. Yeah, she was, for performing well into her 90s. As a matter of fact, yes, her, her party for her um, retirement was when she was 91 and a half. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah. Now, you have performed with many national recording artists who... Yes. Uh, who was one of the most memorable ones for you, and uh, who would you still like to record with? Olita Adams. Olita Adams. Yes. Great. I yeah. worked with her in with two or three recording sessions, lengthy days. And the cool part about Olita was that at a very, very young age, she became the choir director, the choral director mm -hmm. for her uh, father's church. And so when you get in there to do background vocals with this woman, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> and um, we would switch up parts and to be able to sing with her was such an honor. And I absolutely adore her to this day. Yeah. She's been generous and gracious with my family. Great and um, just a, her heart and her soul and she and John, her husband, mm -hmm. marvelous people, but boy, what a talent she is. Yeah, oh, yeah. I look forward to to working with her some more. Yeah. And now, you know, we know you as an outstanding performer. No Thank doubt you. about Thank that. You. Hands down. But how did you become a featured motivational speaker and, and, and wow. a voiceover artist? You know, sometimes, just by my work at WCCO Radio, it really was a great college for mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. in that you really learn how to tell stories by being in the media. Yeah. So that was a great training ground, but I will say that eight years ago I suffered what is called aortic dissection. Mm -hmm. It's what took the life of John Ritter, and it's actually an aneurysm in your aorta, mm -hmm. which feeds your body, mm -hmm. and it is a near-death scenario, was for me anyway. On the other side of it, when I got back to singing finally, a woman in a church service said, you know, Patty, you really gr sang great songs today. I went, well, I have this platform. I'm so fortunate. And she said, no, you really live your gift. And I had this aha that that was another reason why I was here, not only to love, nurture my children, now my grandchildren and my mom and play music was to remind people that they all have gifts. Yeah. Don't bury them, get out there and uh, f remember what they are mm -hmm. and use them, whatever those gifts may be. Yeah. Music, listening, uh, nurturing, 
You know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So that is a big part of where I stem my talks from, because you can do it. If you see, if you can see it and you can believe it, you'll be able to do it. Well, that's no so. doubt about it. You know, what, what is the difference, you think, then, as you continue to perform <clears throat> uh, in, in music today that continues to inspire you to, to create new and great, because you have a new CD uh, 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 that yes, you're working on right. or that's out continues to influence you and, and make you energized for this business? Well, I've shifted a little bit. I still do songs that people love, but I've become selfish too. Mm -hmm. And I surround myself with musicians that I adore. Oftentimes it's family members. Mm -hmm. But there is a language that goes on on a stage that w it's kind of like we're having fun and you guys get to watch. Yeah. And the inspiration comes in recreating songs, making the old into new, and actually just uh, having my artist be at its peak performing level and um, delivering the message. Yeah. So living my gift. Yeah, never gets old. Yeah. What's next for Patty <coughs> Peterson? Well, I am. Um, working out in Los Angeles more, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm uh, never going to leave Minneapolis okay. and St. Paul we area. Won't let you go no, 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 no. <laughs> never going to do that. But I have been invited to work many fantastic jazz clubs and uh, contemporary jazz clubs, great, and great. I have performed at Catalina's. I've got the Dave Kaz um, Lounge at Spaghettini in Beverly Hills coming so up great. in the spring. So. Yeah. You know, I it's the first time in my life that I don't have anyone to take care of. So guess what? I'm going to be Diana Ross. Think? It's my turn, right? Yes, I love it. <laughs> Patty Peterson, thank you. thank you so very much. Thank you so right, much. I'm honored you had me. Thank you. Okay. Weekly here on Urban Perspectives, we present Shining Stars, highlighting people, places, and events that contribute to the vibrancy of the urban community. Our Shining Star this week is the owner and founder of Extravagant Events and Sweet Treats. It's a full-service wedding, planning, and events company. She is also a wife and mother. Meet our Shining Star, Tiffany Davis. My name is Tiffany Michelle Davis. I am the owner of Extravagant Events and Sweet Treats, where we do full service wedding event planning and custom cake creations. I've been doing the Extravagant Events, planning events for about eight years and custom cakes for about three. One day, um, we decided I was watching a TV commercial and I was like, huh, oh, let's see if I can do something like that. So one year, decided to do my daughter's sheet cake for her birthday. It turned out awesome. And I was like, it's not as hard as people think it is. So started off just doing that. Got a couple inquiries about custom cakes. I had to build my confidence up for that though, because at first I'm like, I'm not an artist at all. So working with my husband, I'm like, you know what? How about you go ahead and draw my stencils out for me? And then I just kind of figure out how to, you know, work with the fondant and the frosting and completely self-taught. I tell people I went to YouTube Academy. To be honest with you, it's a, a straight confidence booster for me. Um, I love working with people. I love being able to put a smile on people's face, whether it's with a cake, whether it's with their event. So to me, to see someone else happy makes me happy inside. And me knowing that I'm the reason behind of it, it's more of a like inspiration and, and a confidence booster for myself. My husband as my partner is very important. I mean, to me, it shows that uh, in an in, in African-American community, you know, first of all, having a two-parent household is a big deal. I mean, for the fact that he's my business partner, he helps keep me grounded. Of course, we have our battles sometimes at work and having to take them home as well. But um, being able to have somebody that can genuinely know you, know, you know, and can see your vision and understand your vision and we can bounce ideas off of each other, um, I feel that's a win-win situation. Most people feel like they can't do it. And I want people to look at me and say, if she can do it, I know I can do it too. Um, especially for young girls, because a lot of times, you know, they don't have that inspiration or that motivation to be like, I think if I put my mind to it, I can do what I want to do. My name is Tiffany Davis with Extravagant Events and Sweet Treats, and you are watching Urban Perspectives. Thanks, Tiffany. The cakes are fantastic. My next guest leads a partnership of 24 community organizations and nine schools working together to prepare Northside children to provide them with tools for success in education. Meet Sandra Samuels next on Urban Perspective. Back to Urban Perspectives, our next guest leads a coalition of more than two dozen community organizations whose goals are to reduce poverty and raise the educational level of children in North Minneapolis. She is the president and CEO of Northside Achievement Zone, and her personal commitment is to create a collaborative 
effort among schools, groups, and service organizations to develop a platform for successful outcomes. Please welcome to Urban Perspectives, Sandra Samuels. Sandra, how are you doing? Good, Pete. Thank you for having me. Is it Sandra or? Yep, Sa you got it, Sandra. Sandra. I like that. <laughs> it's spelled differently. Uh, yes, than you Sandra. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, I understand you've just re received a, a major award for the work that you guys have done. I want to say congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Minneapolis uh, Regional Chamber of Commerce. We're uh, the best uh, nonprofit in class uh, yeah. for this year. That's great. So, yeah. Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank so you. So what prompted you, uh, Sandra, to help establish what is known as the Northside Achievement Zone? Um, we looked at the outcomes for families and children in North Minneapolis, which is ground zero for mm -hmm. every disparity of not just our city, but also our state. Yeah. And so looked at the outcomes around um, violence and mobility and um, um, education and employment and, you know, you name it, mm -hmm. and decided we can do better, yeah. that in fact we can do more together. And, and so in about 2008, we all decided that we, we were inspired by the Harlem Children's Zone. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. have incredible outcomes yes, with their children and families. 900 thought of as uneducable children today away at college. Mm -hmm. And so we said if it could be done in, in Harlem, we can certainly do it in North Minneapolis. Yeah, well, great. Now, you know, I know it took a lot to influence the funders yes. uh, and do all the work behind the scenes work. Uh, to undertake this ambitious effort to improve our performance of our children in our community, but how were you able to get them to fund this program at the level that it's been funded? Yeah, so um, in 2008 is when um, about um, 50 nonprofit organizations came together in North Minneapolis. But the thing is, we agreed on one North Star. Um, ending multi-generational poverty using mm -hmm. education as a lever mm -hmm. and that we would align multi-sector cross-agency and this would had not been done before mm -hmm. usually we operate in silos right. but families and children don't come in pieces mm -hmm. they're whole so to align our resources our time our outcomes our data system our staff mm -hmm. around that goal and so we said we take a measured disciplined approach we measure everything we hold ourselves accountable for outcomes mm -hmm. for the well-being of families and oh, children and so being able to show that discipline that measured um, uh, approach to the work I think has made the nonprofit sector and the federal government look at us differently mm -hmm. so we received a 28 million dollar five-year grant in 2011 That's great. Uh, uh, you know for, uh, in competing across the country yeah. because of the approach we were taking and no longer being in silos mm -hmm. in our community which is a drop in the bucket with all the work that has to be done oh together. absolutely absolutely and in fact our grant ends next year and we need our investors to step up mm -hmm. uh, in incredible ways and our state is doing that our individual phil philanthropy the the um, foundation community and so we really need them to double down because yeah. change is happening okay, great 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 now what's some what are some of the programs <coughs> over at Nas and, and how do families get uh, involved with them and their children yeah you know so when we first started we just door knocked mm -hmm. we go to doors you know would you like your child to go to college and if so could you use some support or what we'd say is could you use someone having your back to make yeah, that happen yeah. no family mm -hmm. if they open the door and talk to us said no mm -hmm. so our thing is it was a it, it is a place-based approach so mm -hmm. we cover 255 blocks in North Minneapolis we chose wow. an area that has the worst outcomes for children we started with a the first year we had about 120 families as we did the work mm -hmm. today we have 740 families 1700 scholars we call all our baby scholars yes, to get at that indeed. belief gap 0 to 18 and and so while we recruit from the zone and the families who have the most need we also work in nine schools mm -hmm. so we have 30 partners nine schools and we're really recruiting in those schools and we're asking the teachers to send us the children who are most behind I see right I see now I know that this has had a broad effect even on you Tell us a little bit, how has it excited you? How has it pushed Sandra to do more, even more than what you're doing? Well, my husband and I have been living in North Minneapolis for 18 years mm -hmm. and wouldn't live anyplace else. And, 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 I, and we live, again, ground zero for all the disparities and we, we've seen them, mm -hmm. especially with my neighbors who are not as educated as, as we are, don't have as, as much of an income and two-parented household in a, in a big support system. Yeah. And so what for me, Pete, the real deal is in 18 years, and it's not because I'm leading the organization mm -hmm. of this incredible collaborative, mm -hmm. but the parents are leading us. Mm -hmm. The neighbors, 
that before I, I wondered and sometimes would lose hope, they have stepped up in amazing ways. So when I talk about this collaborative, it's not just about people like me. The real leaders, mm -hmm. the real success stories are the parents who have stepped up and the children and they've taken control of their own destiny. Mm -hmm. And we are the wind beneath their wings. A lot of work to do. Yes. A fantastic job thus far. Yes. We got your back. Thank you. All right, Sandra, thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Perspectives. Thank hey. you. Next, we talk with a classically trained, gospel-influenced, jazz-inspired performer who has been a staple in the Minneapolis music scene. Ginger Commodore is next on Urban Perspectives. My next guest is a singer, songwriter, actress, and music educator. She is a member of the jazz ensemble More by Four, who has toured at concert halls and coliseums around the world. She has been a featured soloist as well at the Minnesota Orchestra Pop Series, and she has utilized her musical knowledge and skills to teach in the schools with the Vocal Essence Music Series. Please welcome to Urban Perspectives, my friend, Ginger Commodore. Hi, how Ginger, are you? I'm so glad that you are here. Oh. We just saw you a few weeks back yes. uh, on The Color Purple. You oh, had us absolutely. cracking up, <laughs> and uh, you do a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate uh, it. Did you always aspire to be an artist, uh, Ginger? And, and, <laughs> and, and when did your big break come? You know, I didn't uh, always aspire to be a, a, a performing artist, um, but I got kind of steered in that direction mm -hmm. as I uh, completed high school and college and uh, some things were presented to me that I was able to take the opportunity yeah. to do some things different. I didn't have to just sing Aretha Franklin songs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, lots of opportunities uh, at that age. Yeah. yeah, made it happen for you. Yeah. Uh, as a member of that group, More By Four, mm -hmm. uh, what was one of your most memorable uh, concerts internationally? You know, um, I guess I would say um, the concerts in Umbria, Italy, Umbria. Okay. the Umbria Jazz Festival in Perugia, yeah, I should say. Yeah. Um, it was 10 nights of uh, more by four performing uh, at 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> and then... Uh, I guess the fans were out there. The fans were out. Yeah. The fans were out. Yeah. And uh, then finally making it to the main stage. Uh, the night that uh, George Benson uh, performed, Miles Davis performed, uh, and um, wow. those were some really, really high times, so yeah. Wow. You know, you also are a music educator uh, with the Vocal Essence mm -hmm. uh, Music Series. Yes. How do you use your experience uh, to teach uh, the next generation of artists? Well, you know, we get the opportunity through Vocal Essence to go to the schools and uh, impress upon students that there are so many contributions that African Americans have made to American mm -hmm. history mm -hmm. through music. Yes. And, uh, you know, they don't get an opportunity to, to discuss and learn those things. Mm -hmm. So I go into the schools and we discuss uh, you wouldn't have hip hop uh, without Ella Fitzgerald mm -hmm. uh, doing scatting. scatting. And, okay, so, uh, and they seem to enjoy that, you know, that extra knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so great. Now, we've seen you, uh, Grace, this theater stages as an actress lately mm -hmm. of late. But what was your first and <laughs> most recent stage performance? Uh, the first would probably be an opera that I did. Uh, with wow. Minnesota Opera Company, I was taking an opera course at Hamlin University, and so somehow that's where Aretha got that. From. That's <laughs> that's it. That's it. Uh, and I got a phone call from Philip Brunel, who needed someone uh, in in uh, the show, a premiere that was happening, a death in the family, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't know what I was doing. But I went and I learned uh, uh, quickly on the spot. Mm -hmm. So it, then it just kind of, uh, you know, fast forwarded to the things that I've done through the years and ending up with most recently Color Purple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was a fantastic show. We saw Thank the, the, you. The, 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 we saw it in New York. And okay, we really sure. loved it here. Mm. Uh, comparatively, I think we liked yours. Better. Well, thank you. We, <laughs> we appreciate that. We had a great time. Yeah. You know, um, you and your husband have set the standard for partnership as well mm. as music uh, mm -hmm. collaboration here. Uh, how Thank excited you. are you now about seeing your son and daughter, oh. uh, Ash <laughs> and uh, Brandon, and Brandon. Yeah. Uh, embark on this music industry? 
You know, it is an amazing journey and it is so much fun to see. Mm -hmm. Not only them coming to themselves as young adults, but as artists. Mm -hmm. And um, they paid attention along the way. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have to sit down and say, this is what you do, this is how you do it, go here, do this, because they paid attention to living mm -hmm. uh, our lives through music. Uh, they are absolutely amazing yeah, musicians. Yeah. They're talented songwriters, artists. Uh, my son's an excellent drummer. My daughter, uh, she doesn't believe it, but she does have a sense of perfect pitch. Yeah. And um, it, it is just amazing to see yeah. them grow into themselves. There's much more on the horizon for them. Well, God keeps blessing. Oh, absolutely. What advice would you give uh, the next generation of artists? You talked about how you're teaching them in the schools, but those that may be watching now, what advice would you give them to hone their skills, to move to the next level maybe? You know, I think it is knowing your craft mm -hmm. and being the best that you can be. Sometimes you have to be better than mm -hmm. best. Mm -hmm. Um, the harder you work, uh, the more things that are going to come to you. Mm -hmm. But you got to know what you're doing. You got to listen. You have to, um, uh, you know, as a vocalist, I listen to a lot of scat singing and horn players. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I watch, I, I go to concerts to see not only uh, the people that I enjoy listening to, but I, I like to see their eyes mm -hmm. and see their soul and make sure that it's connected the, to the words that they're yeah, singing yeah. And, and the message that they're trying to give. So it's important, know what you're doing. Study hard. Study hard. Well, you are a prime example of oh, if gosh. you do it, you can uh, achieve oh, great thank things. You. Thank, thank you so you. much, Ginger, oh, it's for my being pleasure. here. We really thank appreciate you, it. Until the husband, I say hello. I will indeed do that. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for watching Urban Perspectives. I'd like to thank my sponsors, the Council on Black Minnesotans, Stair Step Foundations, the Metropolitan Economic Development Association, and Comcast. My guests, Patty Peterson, Sandra Samuels, and the lovely Ginger Commodore, and our shining star, Tiffany Davis. And you, of course, for getting up with Urban Perspectives. Visit our website at urbanperspectives.tv for information on our guests, and you can help us grow by liking our Facebook page. Remember, there are positive things happening in our city, and you can see them right here on Urban Perspectives. Now enjoy the photos of the week featuring Vocal Essence Luncheon. I'm Pete Rhodes, and I'll see you next week.